All right, I've got a hood. I got OGHQ. Uh, this is the Verse first video, uh, other than just touring and sharing, you know, the install of the products in here, like lighting or the lift. Uh, this is the first video series that I'm going to shoot uh, here at OGHQ, and it probably it's going to be hard to beat. Uh, so notice I've got a test hood here. This is, I think, from a yeah, this is from a Cadillac, like a 2005 or six Cadillac SRX in black. There's raccoon prints all over it. There's scratches all over. Over it, uh, lots of peel, lots of uh, swirl marks, uh, but we're going to use this. I've got a Honda Civic hood and a, and a Pontiac G6 hood uh, that we'll be working on here over the course of this these next few days, uh, dealing with uh, sanding, scratch removal, uh, compounding versus sanding, sanding and compounding, and talking about all the different, um, a lot of different higher level uh, detailing uh, techniques. Uh, it's interesting how there are multiple camps, you know, there, there is, it's almost like politics where you have the anti-wet sanders and the only wet sanders and then we have everything in between. Uh, I, you know, who knows, we may do this and I may feel like I don't have the skill set or just not interested in doing it uh, or, you know, I may end up sanding all the time, you know, we'll see. But I, what I am so interested in is learning new techniques and then being able to take from all the areas that I've learned, whether it's books or learning from experts or learning from you know people that have been doing it a long, long time. Uh, I feel like my uh, part of the advantage of the access that I now have is the ability to be able to pull from all of these resources, uh, share it with the world, and then learn for myself. You know, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm simply simply creating videos of stuff that I'm interested in and then just carrying the camera along. So what we have today, uh, uh, Jason Kilmer, who is generally regarded as one of the wet sander, best wet sanders in the world, uh, he's going to be coming and sharing, dumping tons of knowledge on all of us. As you know, I'll have tons of questions. I'll ask stupid questions that I already know the answer to, just for the good of the, the, the video. Uh, I'll ask questions that I don't know the answer to, uh, and we'll work through this process of learning all kinds of new stuff. Uh, some of it you guys may know, some of you may not, some of it I may know, some of it I may not. Uh, and uh, actually most of it I probably won't. But we're gonna work a lot on technique, on product use, on sandpaper use, uh, and, and everything in between. So I suspect this video series will be multiple parts, uh, multiple hours. Uh, so you know, if you're not into high level detailing, uh, this may not be the right series for you. Uh, but if you wanna learn how to wet sand, uh, I, th I think we're going to be able, by the end of this, I think we're gonna be able to feel confident grabbing a piece of paper and getting out a scratch, or at least improving the scratch to where it's less visible. Uh, and then we're gonna talk through the, you know, the pros and cons of paint removal and, and removing too little or too much. Uh, and you know, share the differences between what if we compounded that scratch or that area versus sanded it. So I'm excited for this video series. Uh, some of the other other guys will be stopping by uh, just to kind of kind of help out, or or you know, maybe even grab a piece of paper and and demonstrate uh, you know their their techniques. But uh, Jason Kilmer and then uh, Proficient X, uh, Andy Ward, uh, who is a uh, um, high high level detailer out of Miami. Uh, Jason and Andy have started a company called KXK Dynamics. We're be talking about some of their products, some of the things that they're developing, uh, which will support all of us and, and aid us in you know, polishing. The other thing I'm really excited about is they have uh, created a new uh, polish holder. I've been begging them to do it where it's a single holder. It looks fantastic, so we'll be talking about that. So anyway, the guys will be here in about an hour. i got to run over, grab, uh, grab the paper and the polishes, and uh, we'll get rolling. So are you doing that just to purposely mess it up? Yep. Okay. As if it's not messed up enough already? Exactly. It's never messed up with Kilmer. We can always jack it up even more. Shoot, these chains are gonna drive me crazy. You're uh, making me go to uh, Harbor Freight to buy some stands. You're like blaspheming in Mormon world because I, you know, I need something that's like 500 bucks. I know, I know. I'm like, Matt, let's just go cheap and easy. It's no big deal. <laughs> I'm sorry. I started. I didn't want. I didn't but start to head down the wormhole. Might get the best, deal on that. best in the world. <laughs> Just yeah. Saying. So do we need to 
decom this thing or? Yeah, it's a, yeah. So is there a special uh, Jason Kilmer way to decon stuff? No, it's quick and easy down and dirty. Like kind soap of and water while you're washing the car? Um, a lot of times with those high-end cars I do, we don't even do that. We just get down and dirty, wipe it off. If we're gonna polish and compound, there's really no special way. All right, so this is Nano Skin Glide. We're yeah. just we're just getting the dirt off. We're just off. getting it off. This, this sat in the junkyard for Lord knows how yeah. long. We want to get everything off of it. So when we sand, we what we want to do is sanding is a lot like a, a suspension, like on an autocross car or something, mm -hmm. or say your Porsche. You want you don't want too much grip and you don't want too much slip. You want a little bit of bolt. Because you want, as you make a pass with sandpaper, mm -hmm. you want it to sand. If you have it too slick, you know, like a, say you, a bath with an O&R and you put O&R in the spray bottle, the paper is going to slip and not, and just go across the surface. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I feel that you'd lose some control. A little bit, you yeah. want a little bit of surface tension. So IPA wipe down after using anything that has any kind of yeah. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan kind of, of an IPA wipe down. Uh, any polymer inside of it. Yeah, we want to we want to get rid of those polymers. And a lot of times, if you're if you're cutting and buffing, and you go back and sand, a lot of times the the compounds and polishes have basically the pores of the paint have opened up. The mm -hmm. polishes have gone down into the pores, and now you're just slipping on that on that surface. So should we um, should we like uh, clay or auto scrub this thing? Yeah, I would auto scrub it really good. Okay, let's do it. Give that. it a little deep clean. All right. And what we'll do is we'll just pick kind of a scratch, localize it with a little red stick. Okay. And because that's what the DIY guy's going to use it. It's just a, you know, th that product was specifically designed for the DIY guy or the detailer that's never seen it before, where they can visualize them using a block like that as opposed to some of the blocks that I use. It's a little less than So those are your KXK yes. sticks there? Yes, the ridge sticks. Yeah, gotcha. And it's funny how that that whole thing came about. So when I was making blocks, um, I had a couple of cutoff pieces that I had from a big block. And I'm like, hey, I think the average user could use a small block like this. Why small? Wouldn't big be easier to deal with? No, because you, we're not concerned about a big footprint. We're more concerned about the flow of the panel. So control, you control, have more control with a small? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, because my natural tenant's thought would be... Bigger go better. Yeah, yeah if I had bigger, bigger then I... Yep, no. Less not, chance of... No, more, more chance because of how the surface relates to the block, actually how the block relates to the surface as far as so, cause contact I, packs. I guess it would make sense I could roll over and put more pressure on one side of a bigger block. Yeah, we, that's exactly what we don't want. Right. We want, we want that whole block to be supported by the surface and vice versa. All right, so we're deconning here, but what do we, um, what do we start? Like, as you far know, as. So, uh, where do we start with sanding? Like, okay. like I've literally never done it before, okay. other than the one video you saw me yeah. kind of grab it and say, "Oh, let's see what happens." Well, let let's let me do my thing off camera, and then I will explain to you, and then we'll we'll okay. get back on. We'll, we okay. can do the camera thing. There's no such thing as off camera in obsessed garage, Jason. <laughs> Everything's on camera. Oh, this looks good. Yeah, it's beauty. I don't think this has been repainted, has it? Nope. No. It's back. Factory. So again, the idea behind the the hard and the soft. Hard's gonna make a harder cut. Mm -hmm. Softer's gonna kind of go into the can easily go into the the lows and so the, the high whole blocks. block. Okay, so we have a whole soft block and a whole hard block. Yes, gotcha. Is that ABS plastic in the middle there? Is that? Yeah, yeah, it's acrylic. 
Gotcha. Yeah. So, and the, the idea is to have the tapered surface. So, if I want to create a curvature, um, mm -hmm. I can actually put a piece of sandpaper on the paint, sand side up, and actually create that exact profile. And the reason we, route, we routed it is to go ahead and get that already started. So mm -hmm. you can go ahead and do that. So typically what I do before I even start sanding is I go ahead and I do an isolated spot or look at it and see how we're going to sand mean, it. Make an isolated spot or find an isolated find, spot? Find an isolated spot. Okay. Or you can make one depending on what, what we're doing. And then I go ahead and put the block on the surface. And I just kind of run the block over the surface just to see the flow of the panel as it... So block, so, no paper. No paper, just so I have a big dent or a low spot right here and I can feel it through the block. Go ahead and run, run it over the surface. Aren't I gonna scratch it doing this? Yeah, don't scratch it. Just, oh, you can feel yes, that little divot? Yeah, yeah. Start to so where do my fingers start? Do I just grab the thing? Is there something special no, I need to do? A lot of guys claw it. Well, yeah. our, our, if we have full contact, mm -hmm. and not, let's get away from the panel. Let's more think about contact patch to shapes. How does my block go over the shape? So what we actually, instead of going perpendicular to the shape, we're basically, if the block is here, we're gonna, we're gonna rub through a, a great more because we're, we're just shaving off that, that, that high spot. Mm -hmm. So we wanna go pretty much dance around the high spot so we can get the highs and the lows. It's a combination of highs and lows and how do we sand it to evenly distrib distribute the highs and the lows to try to get a more even mm -hmm. surface. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, it, I mean, it's really, once you start to know how to move the block on the surface, before you even start putting paper on it, I always, if I'm doing a show car, I'll look down the panel, see if there's any highs and lows, so I don't find that the bad way. The bad way is making a mistake. We don't want to make a mistake. So how can we, how can we run a block over the surface to try to make every pass count? In, in a so, positive direction. So a mistake could be I uh, roll it up and, yeah, and dig just, in. Yeah, just, I mean, not even that. Just just maybe a little bit of pressure more can make a world of difference. Mm -hmm. so, Which would mean more sanding, more compounding to yeah, fix the... Exactly. Fix the fix. Fix right? the fix, yeah. Right. Put, put a little, put a 2,000 grit scratch maybe a little bit deeper. So yeah. again, I just hold the block. I support, I put my pinky here and I just literally hydroplane over the surface because if I have full contact patch, that paper is hitting 100% of, of the panel or shape as I'm sanding it. So I don't need pressure, and that's, that is a common misconception. If we're body working, you know, or painting or something like that, then you're doing larger passes, but essentially, with what we're doing, we're only making small little passes. Okay, see, my tendency is to... Yeah, you want to hammer down. Right. The more pressure, the better. Yeah. Right. My old business partner was 6'10", 300 pounds, so we had to really hone him back on mm -hmm. saying, pressure, pressure, pressure. I mean, you've done faster. That's not necessary. We, we want to actually do the opposite. Mm -hmm. Because if we have contact, the name of the game is contact. Wherever you're at on a panel, on a shape, we want to feel the shape through our fingertips instead of the more pressure we put on, the less we feel through our fingertips. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it becomes a whole sensory thing at this point where the lighter the better. Yeah, but I'm not going to get out the, the scratch if I go light, right? I mean, that's, that's the natural that, that is That's the what natural. my mind is automatically yeah. going to is say, yeah. I want that scratch out, so I've got to, you know, the whole point of the paper is to, you know, to go get to it. To go get it, yeah. Okay. And what that's okay. doing is that's putting a 2,000 grit scratch to maybe more like a 1,000 or something like that, mm -hmm. where gotcha. I, it's just calm, that smooth, makes sense, right. and collected. Okay. 
So that's, that's essentially what we're doing. And flat. I want and flat. flat, even distribution. Even distribution across the surface. And that's the reason why the block is acrylic, because instead of moving the block to our advantage, now the thought process is, instead of doing that, let's make a block to fit the surface. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. So, so we might have a, you know, if we're doing a whole car, um, we want to have different blocks to fit the contour. We may want a longer rid stick. We may want a little bit wider, but for the masses, this fits the bill. Hmm. You give this to a person and they're like, oh, I, I, I can identify with that as opposed to some of the larger blocks that I do. Because this will do this, 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 where a larger block may only work there. Exactly. So let's, let's go a larger block. So now we're in the larger block territory. This is the red stick. This necessarily, what I do is I'll put a block here and I'll just go around in different locations. And if I don't have, if, it's, if there's an air gap there, like a, if you're trying to do a, maybe a feeler gauge type of approach mm -hmm. to a spark plug, same scenario. We want 100% of this block within the, whatever movement we do to hit the surface. If mm -hmm. we got teeter-tottering effect, that's a no-go. See how it's teeter-tottering in this direction? Because you're going to hit one spot considerably more. Exactly. You might not even hit the other spot yeah, at all. It, yeah. it becomes a bridge effect, you know, mm -hmm. where, where we're bridging. The block is hitting a high and not hitting a low because it's bridging, mm -hmm. bridging the low. We, okay. don't want, we don't want that. So is that one of the first parts of assessing when you're deciding? Absolutely. Is, Absolutely. is to make sure that whatever... Whatever pro, yeah, it's very clear that that's not. It's it's a low spot right in here. Yeah. Whereas if I grab one of these, or maybe probably this block may be may be the best option. Yeah. It's teetering a little bit, but if we can control the block to to basically sand in and out of basically sand in and out of a low spot to try to even it out and we'll go parallel to essentially say the high spot. Now we might not get a low spot, so the natural tendency for a low spot, dig harder, this, mm -hmm. you know, go in after it and go ahead and get the low spot when really we want to dip and dive out of the low spot mm -hmm. because we have the high spot. The high spot's not our friend. Are high and low spots more common on like classics? where they blocked it out and filled it. It or depends who did it. <laughs> versus like a new car. Is a new car going to have less high and low because of the precision engineering? Well, them? I mean, if you looked at a stamp piece and you were to sight down the panel and how I show people the sight down panel is look at the panel mm -hmm. and pick a straight, either vertical or horizontal pull or a tree and look at how that tree moves. If that tree moves, there's some sort of deviation in the panel. Okay. So if, if you were to put black lines on your wall here and you yep. were to get down and kind of sight your eye back and forth, up and down, you're, let your eyes follow the panel. If there's a movement, there's a higher low spot. See, so you're, you're scaring me with the artistry involved mm -hmm. in this, mm -hmm. right? It's not just, like I'm an engineer, you know, I'm, a, yeah. I'm just going to brute, yeah. get it done. Yeah. Yeah. And that scares me a little bit about the, what's, anyway, that's just my, and, what my and, mind and is going to. Exactly. And that's why we avoid that, avoid these uh -huh. and go here. I gotcha. Because that is, way, once you become more confident with this, then you can move. Then you can start to. Here. That's, that was purposely done to introduce these mm -hmm. to the average consumer where this, this is a little more intimidating. Because right. that was my big question to you. We were at, at uh, Mobile Tech and I said, by the end of this, by the end of this couple of days, can we teach, well me, yeah. and then by proxy, can we teach people 
how to, you know, we're talking about all the, 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 the you know, the panels yeah. and, the, and the highs and lows and can we teach people how to do it and, you know, it makes yeah. sense that if I grab this sucker, I have, again, my natural tendency, you know, it seems counterintuitive here that in a natural tendency would be the easier to grab this and go, mm -hmm. but now yeah, it makes sense. The, the, I can, really, I can the take, smaller, the better for contact patch purposes. It's all about contact. If we don't have that contact, 100% contact patch, mm -hmm. it's like a race car, where if you don't have the contact patch on your tire, you have too much traction or not enough, you're going to be out of control. Right. Yeah. So how, what block do we use to be in full control? We want to be in full control. Okay. That, that is basically, in a nutshell, what we're trying to do. All right, so we started with getting, figuring out what block we're going to start with, exactly. and then we start to kind of run it on the panel. Now I notice this is really, it's black. We've mm -hmm. already, we're scratching mm -hmm. it just by touching it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So now that we did that, let's get a piece of sandpaper. Mm -hmm. We'll pick an isolated scratch, a, a 3000 grit, just very minimal. So shouldn't I have this paper soaking in a bucket for a couple hours beforehand? I mean, um, you can. Okay. Does it make a big difference? With this, it really doesn't matter. With paper, what it does is it softens the latex mm -hmm. on the front of the paper and the back of the paper. Okay. And it just makes it more pliable. What Do I is. need some fancy special, you know, mountain water or something like no. that? I mean, just nope. tap water is okay. Just tap water is fine. Okay. Dang it. I want fancy I mean, I want you, we, we, we can make you fancy water and I'll, I'll nickname uh, it Sandman water. So. That's a great I idea. Mean, I'd you, sell the heck out of that I water. know you would. You know, we, can, <laughs> we, we can spin I'll buy this. the heck out of it. We can spin this all kinds of different ways. So it is, this is 3,000, this, this what, is what, 3 Trizac? Yeah, this is just a punched out piece of Trizac mm -hmm. with our uh, KXK punches. Okay. And it just fits on the paper. And with the Trizac... Uh, type of paper, it was designed to actually be used with very minimal water. Okay. So we'll just take this here, just a little bit of water, and we'll just lightly sand until we start to see a white slurry. No pressure. No pressure. I'm just floating it back and forth, kind of a crisscross pattern. Essentially, Florida to Washington pattern because I'm a lefty. Mm -hmm. If you're a righty, it's more of a Arizona to New York. You see the kind of the foam. We're starting to get the white slurry. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of just like that. We'll wipe it off. So now, because we're sanded and we're going to compound and finish, mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about messing it up when we're wiping, right? No, I mean, no. That's... I know I'm asking stupid questions, but... And it should look nice and consistent like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you didn't go this way and then that way and that way? I mean, it's one, one direction? No, one direction. Because the problem with uh, going all different direction is your focus is going directions where what you should be focusing on is just your even consistent pattern. That's more important than doing scratches. If you've done a nice consistent pattern, it'll buff out very easy. Okay. Very now, consistent. what if, do you go a different direction depending on the scratch you're dealing with? No, or just no. so that doesn't I'm, the, the scratch is the least of my concern. What I'm worried about is the contour of the panel. Okay. And that's how I can get very aggressive approach for me personally without making a mistake because I'm not worried about the scratch I'm worried about the panel and the shape because of the so-called teeter-tottering effect we want that contact patch and if I can if I can manipulate the block across the surface less is more so making every pass count instead of sanding all in different directions. And sometimes you might need to do that. You know, if you have a, a dip in there, you might need to slightly move the block in a different direction. But being less pressure and floating it, I can accomplish a lot in a very short amount of time with less, less passes. So how do you know so is it the, the white, the, the slurry that comes, mm -hmm. the, the residue, if you the clear that's coming yeah. off of it? 
Is that when you know that you It means we're starting to flatten the surface. Mm -hmm. Because when it's wet, you can't see that. No, right? no. Right. I, but I can, in the block, being a, it's a hard base, uh, a base, mm -hmm. I can feel that in my fingertips. I can feel how the paper is starting to, it's starting to have less resistance, which means it's starting to get flatter, or mm -hmm. I'm starting to get the scratch out. Now, contrary, when you get it smooth like this, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I got the scratch out. That's necessarily not the case. Just because you've got it gray or a matte finish does not necessarily mean you've got the scratch completely out. So you, we need to be real cautious with that. I would rather make a pass and do a quick buff and compound to see where I got where I'm mm -hmm. at as opposed there's, to keep on sanding. There's no secret trick to know other than get the polisher out and yeah yeah there's really not i mean just years of experience and, and you know many hours on the sanding block and just being around paint mm -hmm. um you will you will eventually learn how to do that but um on a scratch like this my saying is sand to improve not remove mm -hmm. so my thought process is if i can get the white out of the scratch for the the average end user, that's what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm not trying to remove all the scratch. Now me personally, yes, I'll, I'll go try to get the scratch out. But for the end user, 10 or 15 passes, so back and forth would be one. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 10, 10 of those, wipe off, do a quick buff, see where you're at to try to, you know, lessen the chance of making a mistake. You can always go more but once you go a lot more, there, there's a point of no return. Okay. So a, a 10 pass minimum is usually what I tell the, the average consumer or amateur is a good way to start. But it's always good to have a paint gauge mm -hmm. to see where you're at, see if it's been resprayed. Me personally, I can look at a panel and see if it's been resprayed. Mm -hmm. But on an OEM, I have an idea of kind of where we're at. Typically, um, import cars are, are, you know, the, the not the high-end cars like the Porsches and the Audis and the Beamers. The, the Asian uh, market of cars tend to be less mills uh, mm -hmm. than, say, your, you know, Chevy or Ford or even Porsche or Audi tend to have more paint on the surface. Mm -hmm. So now it's your turn. Okay. Go ahead and we'll pick a spot here. Um, just. Let's see what we can do here. That little scuff, just okay. right there. All right. We'll go ahead and give you a. We'll give you a soft block here. All right. So I'm righty. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna go this way. Yep. So natural tendency is gonna be to hose the sucker down. Yeah. No. Right. Just just. Do I break. hit this and that? Nope. Just hit the surface because we already with the Trizac system mm -hmm. we already have water in this disc moisture. Okay. And then I want this about like that. And we want to put the fingertips right on the acrylic, use the, right there, and kind of use your pinky as a guide. Just make about 10 passes. We'll wipe it off and see where you're at. That's 20, okay. so That's 10. 10 gets on you real quick, doesn't yeah, it, once yeah. you get going. Okay, well. So I noticed already, I tend to jump. Yeah. I'm like jumping across yeah. the panel, yeah. Yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. I didn't want to and, do that, but it was and, just, it's just happening. And I was listening to your pressure. I can turn this way and I can listen to your pressure. Yeah. You're diving on the edges. Uh -huh. Your tent, you were actually sanding the edges. Now, yep. the nice thing about this block, is is we have some cushion in the block, yeah. right? And we have some cushion in this pad. That's gonna make so up a little it, bit it's of it. It's kind of sanding for dummies, per se. Right. So we, right. we, we, we've built in that fudge factor. Right. Okay? I can even see the inconsistency of. Yeah, yeah. As opposed to, it's a slightly more consistent here. Mm -hmm. um, but not, not bad. I mean, not bad. <laughs> it, it, it's... Now I struggle with this all the time too. Even when I'm polishing, 
I have a hard time with pad flatness. Exactly. Like brain to hands. So I, I have a feeling that's going to be an issue yeah. with, with sanding as it well will be. for me. Your, your natural tendencies, how you polish, yeah. is essentially how you sand. It's not, it's the same thing. We're just, it's different ways to mm -hmm. get there. Because I, I tend to, I tend to grab with my with my off hand mm -hmm. instead of keeping you know equal pressure with my you know with the, the guide hand yeah. and I end up lifting or pulling yeah. on the yeah. thing all the time and what I do is when I polish is a lot like how I sand I get down here mm -hmm. I lock my elbows in and I just do this I want to create a DA has a very rough movement action mm -hmm. okay so we want to try to pretend or try to navigate that to more of a CNC type of movement. So how we do that is we lock in our bodies nice and tight and we just move just like this to try to keep that pad as flat as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's practice. Let me see if I can show you guys what the difference here is in my standing spot versus Jason's. It's hard to see because of the, the black. Pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, to the floor.